Hi, I'm Lucy, and, and this I'm, is sorry. I'm Sarah. I'm Sarah. <laughs> and we've decided we're going to have a little chat about being fifty. We've decided to call ourselves the Dragons because we're both that in the Chinese horoscopes, and have a little chat about um, being fifty on this particular occasion about travelling with children. Yes, yes. So um, off you go then. This is Sarah, who's a massive expert in travelling with children. <laughs> massive expert. Um, I've written about um, travelling with babies, and mm -hmm. travelling with toddlers, and travelling with teenagers, and mm -hmm. we've both got teenagers now. And um, I've uh, been doing a lot of research about things like kids' clubs, and that they're not um, popular with children. Um, popular with parents. They're popular with parents, but they're not popular with children. Um, on and, at any level, on, at any age. Um, before, um, actually, no. They would, the children would prefer to be with their mum and dad. Um, although after the age of four, they would prefer to be um, with just mum or dad. <laughs> they don't want both of them there. Um, but then presumably, at teenagers and fifteen, they don't want either parent there anyway, do they? They want to just well, hang out with their friends. Well, they do. They they do actually, um, but they just don't want Some you to do. know it. Yes. Right. Well, yes. Well, mine's at home at the moment in bed because he went to all night party last night. But mine's mm. so. out. <laughs> in fact, they're all out. Yes, they're always out. Yeah, but I, I I I think it's difficult with teenagers because when you go on holiday with them, they tend to uh, they they want you to pay for everything, but they are. They are appreciative, they just don't let you know, and they do listen, they mm. just don't want you to know. Mm. But later in later life, they will tell you that they've been mm. listening to you. So you've got to be careful, it's a bit like the toddlers. Teenagers are like toddlers, but they're less articulate than toddlers. But they're exactly the same, they need you, but you just don't know that they need you. No. I have to say, I've just done some brilliant holidays, and I, I, I think that's when they're older, it's the best thing you can do with children you know, of a certain age, because they still want to come, as you say, because you're paying. And then you've got them exclusively, and actually that's a really lovely time to have them. It's a really special time, a really yeah. good experience. I think the best thing to do, like I want to take time to, it's my son, who's uh, maybe 17, um, to Costa Rica. Um, but if you go to sort of Australia, or if you can afford to take them to um, sort of like the California Loop, starting off in LA, driving to San Francisco, then to go into Yosemite and Death Valley and Vegas. Teenagers love Vegas. You know, when, when I took Tom there, I thought I'd failed as a mother because he thought it was fabulous. Don't they have to be 21 to really benefit from um, being in well, Vegas? Or... We, couldn't, we couldn't go into We couldn't really do anything. Obviously, you can't do the gambling. No. Which a lot of the shows no. are a bit dodgy. But um, what you can do it is, you know, walk along the mall. Most of them have seen the, um, uh, the Ocean's 11 and 12 and 13 films. So they all, like, all know the Bellagio, I think it is. And um, there's, there's, it's, a, it's a city of lights in the middle mm. of a desert, and they appreciate that. Mm. Um, you know, and, and seeing Death Valley and seeing the contrast of San Francisco. San Francisco is an excellent city for teenagers. Yeah. Um, it's very trendy, very hip. It's got that um, very edgy feel to it, and it's and it's an easily walkable city as well. Mm. Um, and teenagers actually really like um, cities that uh, you know they wouldn't appreciate perhaps when they were younger, mm. and they just go there because the parents went there mm. as well. And so back to Vegas, so obviously then you can do the helicopter ride, and you've got the Grand Canyon as, yeah. as well. So yeah. actually, now in hindsight, I think that's somewhere I would like to take my children because, yeah. as you say, there's lots to do, even if it's even if they can't. Drink or gamble, that's not a bad thing, is it? No, no. And also, as I said, I mentioned about Australia, and also one destination for next year, 2016, that's going to be really, really popular is China. And I'm, I'm talking about far off destinations, but this has been such a uh, surreal year as far as um, safety is concerned. Mm. You know, I was looking up uh, Christmas places, uh, places to go for Christmas that people wanted to go, and I was having a look at websites. And one website listed Tunisia, Sharm el Sheikh. Weekends in Paris. <laughs> I think they should look at their website again. Yeah. So, and and next year it's going to be for short haul destination Italy because it's safe. Yeah. Not because it's sunny, but because it's safe. And then for long haul ones, um, they're not even considering America. They're thinking about Australia or China. You know, China's safe compared to sort of an yeah. Earth of Mars. Sort of, but you don't know. There's been so much going on. And but teenagers, they're um, they, they're much more aware. They're getting much more involved. Mm. Um, although one teenager I spoke to um, when I was doing the, the, the survey about the, the kids clubs um, said that. You know, he felt that um, parents uh, wrapped them in cotton wool, and they were very aware of um, how you know how to behave and how you've got to be very diligent and things like that. So I think our teenagers are actually much more clued up than we, you know. And actually, 
as you know, um, considering Paris has just happened, do you have advice for how to deal with, how to talk to teenagers about the threat of terrorism and stuff? I think actually most of them, especially when they come into the lower, the lower sixth or the fifth form, it's talked about sort in schools. They don't in the schools they don't um, treat it as though it's sort of like it's, it's not to do with them. It's nothing to do with them, even from a very young age. I think actually even if the parents don't do it, you've now got things in schools which are the PSHD teaching emotional intelligence, yeah. um, and even in assemblies. They talk about it a lot, yeah. really, both in state and the public schools. So I think whatever you do as a parent, um, you, you, you're, you're passing on your own um, ex experience or lack of it or fear or mm. lack of it. Whereas in, in the schools, I think they will talk about it in a very, um, a very effective way, a, a very pragmatic way. Um, it's always good, I think, to, to, if you want to, if you're worried about it, to speak to the school and say, oh, are you actually going to be talking about this? Because mm. um, I remember when the Paris um, shootings and the bombings happened, I did talk to my son about it and some of his friends, and they said, oh, it's all being talked about at school. We're fine. We know about it. <laughs> I was, oh, right, okay. So actually, I think they, they're handled in a much more effective way mm. than many of the parents are who are just allowed to read the Daily Mail. <laughs> Yeah, because I, I, suddenly my kids were worried, and my youngest was worried about me going into London the next day, and you know, then they've got this vision of that it's going to all happen here, and, um, and I suppose all you can do is reassure them that it's very tiny percentages, mm. and that's it really, and and that the fear is what we all need to avoid. Yeah, but it could. I, the thing, you know, it could happen anywhere. Yeah. I think yeah. that's that's reality. Yeah. It could happen anywhere as well. You know, it could happen on the London Underground. Um, it because it's all so random, mm. and I think that's the thing that scared a lot of people in mm. Paris. Um, that a lot of the the restaurants and the bars, everybody goes to, tourists goes to, Parisians go to. Yeah. So it wasn't a case of it was targeting people who are very politically. No, it was um, soft targets on purpose. So yeah. yeah. So I think that's what terrifies you know, yes. the kids. And, yes. You know, the shopping centre idea and as you say public transport so but yeah yeah but, but they also want the biggest bang in terms of publicity as yeah. well so they're yeah. sort of like so the softer the target the more, yeah you know schools yeah. or you know yeah. the, the, the the mind mm. the mind boggles but i think mm. if you went like that like uh, with with the travel the travel industry um this year I don't know how it survived. Well, obviously, it all survived. But um, recently, we both went to this thing called World Travel Market. We were in the World Travel Market. And it was like the elephant in the room, or the elephant in the huge sort of yeah. Excel. Yeah. It was um, uh, because although there were talks about safety and security and what airlines were doing and what tour operators were doing, Actually, when you went to the relevant tourist boards or when you talked to um, sort of like the tour operators directly, if it was out of the talk, it was though, oh, everything's business as normal um, and that's a political discussion to have. Well, actually, no, it's not a political discussion to have anymore. Um, there is a huge safety issue. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you could see, you know, that the, the, even the atmosphere in Paris at the moment, it's a, they call it a ghost town. And it's not mm -hmm. a ghost town because there's nobody out. It's a ghost town because people are... Um, aware it, it, it could happen to anybody, and I think that realization has sort of never struck people before. No. But I think, as somebody said, well, they've been living under that in the Middle East for well, of course they decades, have. and that's we're, we're just they experiencing have. what they've yeah, been experiencing. Exactly. And I think the teenagers and even the younger children know because they talk about it in, in schools as well, and the teachers, um, they're, they're very aware that. The, the children are worried about it, concerned about it, mm. stressed about it. And a lot of parents don't talk to their, their kids at all about it. Cotton mauling, as one of the mm. teenagers put mm. in. And they're fully aware, so they're getting one message that actually, yes, this is a serious issue, because that's what it says on TV. And the parents saying, oh no, don't, you'll be, you're fine, you're fine. And so there's mixed messages, and I think that's why the schools are actually handling mm. it very, very mm. well. But it's always best to ask yeah. and find out what they're doing yeah. about that. Yeah, that's interesting, yeah. And that also, they'll find out on the internet as well. They mm. will always look it up. Mm. Um, so they can find out for themselves. Mm. So if the parents aren't, you know, balanced. But of course, it depends what medium they're looking at as to whether it's a balanced view or not, isn't it, well, on, online. But. Well, well, exactly. But then you've got bloggers and bloggers mm. and sort of like Twitterers mm. who... Um, Really, all they're, all they're doing is, is opinion. Mm -hmm. and we're back. We've, done, <laughs> we've done nine minutes. We've done nine That's minutes. That's too long. Oh, right. Okay, well, that was easy. That was easy. That was stop easy. now. Yes, okay. Right. Okay, say bye-bye. Bye. It wasn't boring. It wasn't boring.